So the government alleges that I am a master hacker with uh, Anonymous and that I orchestrated one of the largest distributed denial of service attacks that the government had ever seen. The government alleges that I targeted Boston Children's Hospital over the Justina Pelletier controversy. Justina is now crippled in a wheelchair. She had been ice skating uh, six weeks before she entered Boston Children's Hospital. She has not walked in the now uh, 10 years since she has left, um, and it's unknown if she will ever be able to walk again. Uh, another symptom of mitochondrial disease is very severe nerve pain. Uh, Justina had been taking a particular prescription medication named Lyrica to help deaden that nerve pain. It's very common for fibromyalgia patients. Uh, that is one of the treatments that Boston Children's Hospital allegedly stopped, uh, leaving Justina in agony 24-7 uh, around the clock for several consecutive months. One of the things about the case that drew my attention initially, the, the suppression of free speech, the suppression of protected conduct, there was no uh, valid therapeutic or legal reason uh, that you know, I could conjure as to why uh, communications would be so restricted and why there was a photography ban. So they would not allow Justina's parents to photograph Justina uh, during the time she was at Boston Children's Hospital. And they, they were therefore uh, unable to demonstrate uh, her marked visual deterioration under the new treatment plan. So a uh, day before the DDoS attack, this note gets published, handwritten by Justina. It says, they hurt me all the time. They don't let me sleep very much. Please hurry, uh, among other things. The alleged DDoS uh, took down Boston Children's Hospital's donation portal during their largest annual online fundraiser. It allegedly cost the hospital hundreds of thousands of dollars. I was charged under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, the CFAA. For that alleged crime, I was sentenced to 121 months or just over 10 years in federal prison. Uh, I was sent, I was held first uh, pre-trial for about three or four years in various facilities, some run by the U.S. Bureau of Prisons, uh, a private facility in uh, Rhode Island called the Donald W. Wyatt Detention Facility and uh, the Plymouth County um, Correctional Facility. Um, those other facilities contract with the U.S. Marshals to hold pre-trial detainees. Uh, shortly after I was sentenced, I published my first article at The Intercept. It was about the conditions at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York. This is the facility where uh, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman Lorera was held pending trial. Um, it's also the facility where Jeffrey Epstein, uh, the financier and convicted pedophile, where he later died. After I wrote an article for The Intercept about the conditions at that facility, uh, 12 days later, I was moved to the Communications Management Unit at the Federal Correctional Institution in Terre Haute, Indiana. The uh, Federal Correctional uh, Institute, or the, the CMU in Terre Haute, Indiana was the first of the two CMUs. It was opened in 2006 during the Bush uh, war on terror, the justification to the public to fund it was that uh, the administration would hold Al-Qaeda guys and jihadi type guys at this facility and mine their communications for intelligence to use in the war efforts in Iraq and Afghanistan. They took the old federal death row building, um, they built a new death row elsewhere in the compound in Terre Haute, and they turned the old federal death row building uh, into the CMU. It's the law library here. Uh, and then you have um, the cell. So you're cut off largely from your family, from your attorneys, from your support base. They use that in ways both subtle and overt uh, to try to mess with you. Um, they try to like make uh, the prison administration tries to insinuate itself into your life and try to like make themselves your only ally, kind of classic interrogation techniques. Uh, there is no air conditioning in either CMU. The CMU in Terre Haute is a brick and iron facility built in the 1930s. Uh, it is essentially an oven in July, uh, and you essentially bake in your cell. If there is a lockdown, and there were several lockdowns that lasted for several days during the summer, um, you are just stuck in sweltering heat uh, with nowhere to go, no way to cool yourself down. I'm surprised more people don't have severe problems with heat stroke. Uh, during COVID, um, you know, you were locked, we were locked down a lot. I was very concerned for the welfare of some of the older gentlemen in the CMU. We have guys there in their 60s and 70s, uh, and no special effort was made by health services, uh, to my knowledge, um, to check in on those older gentlemen. Steel cables? 
that kind of run between the two sides of the building like this. My opinion on Mr. Assange's case is that he is being punished for telling the truth, that the crimes, or the, uh, the allegations against him could be leveled against any journalist uh, who accepts information from a source and then publishes it. I think it is also a test case. Washington wants to see just how far it can go in curtailing journalism and curtailing uh, the truth from coming out about the government's own war crimes and misconduct. Right. And if they succeed in this case, it does set a very, very dangerous precedent where no journalist anywhere in the world should ever feel safe telling the truth about Washington ever again. That is what is at stake here and nothing less. Um, I think at the, the higher levels in Washington, there is a need to um, suppress him from saying anything further about Washington or its misdeeds. I think they are very concerned about what else Mr. Assange might know. Uh, about their various courses of conduct over the past 40 or so years. They're very concerned that he knows other things and uh, when confined will try to uh, get those to the press, right? And so they, they want an end to their Assange problem. They want to know that there is no more truth coming out uh, about the government's various misconduct. This is the ritual when I have to get something out I don't, that I knew, but that they, that they did not. And I come down here every so often to... They know he's going to be mistreated in their custody. Everyone is. The U.S. federal system is, is atrocious. And I use that word uh, intentionally and expressly. It is an atrocity uh, what the U.S. federal system does to people in its custody. Um, you know, Jeffrey Epstein died in a, in a you know, similar kind of instance in a, a, you know, a, a special housing unit that's used to, to keep a close eye on people the government thinks may, uh, may try to publish dangerous information. Um, and then the Whitey Bulger case, right? And, and then there's, even out on bail, there's what happened to Aaron Swartz, right? So um, unfortunately, yes, I, I think uh, Julian does face a, a very real, substantial, non-trivial chance uh, that he will perish uh, in this system and that he will perish under unconscionable, atrocious, and unconstitutional circumstances. Not only is there no allegation that he published anything false, there is no uh, reasonable, there's no reason to believe that the public ever would have found out about this stuff any other way. The State Department certainly wasn't going to release a press release talking about its own alleged war crimes, right? So yeah, I, I, I think it's, the, it's very easy to see the true intention of the Assange prosecution and the CMUs and to see that these two things are very much aligned. So my wife, you know, kept very dutifully kept all this stuff and, and kept it, you know, relatively organized.